hey, welcome back, and let's continue making our routing system. So I'm spending so much time on the routing system because it's the most important thing of this whole thing. So the router is very, very important. What comes next? Not so much as the router because the router is what creates the framework, okay? So you have to understand this part, otherwise it doesn't work. Okay, so now what we've done is so far, if the file is not found, anything that's in here, um, we've eliminated the need to create folders when we create slashes here. So that's good. Now let's see how we can manage this. So let's see, for example, we had a, um, we wanted to access the, um, what's this, the, the folder. We wanted to access a product or the page products. So I'm going to go here and say public and I'll say, or let's say a profile page. So I'm going to say profile slash John like this. Okay. So here like this, you can tell that I want to access a profile page. And on that profile page, I want to get to John. Okay. It's as simple as this. It doesn't get any better than that. Or you can say something like product, uh, maybe products, and then categories or category slash slash two, okay? So here you can see that I want to access products in the category of one. So that's category number one in products. So at least you get the idea of the URLs like this. Now, the reason why we want URLs that look like this is because these URLs are cleaner to the human eye. So if someone is searching for your website and then they see a link like this, it really makes sense uh, to them, they see, okay, there's products here and there's that. And also because you can actually include your product name in here. Let's say for example, um, it's baby powder like this. Okay, you are including your, uh, the name of your product in the URL, which means if somebody is searching for baby powder, this link describes that. So you rank higher on Google searches like this, okay? That way, if you put a course there and it's learning about PHP, the link will describe the course itself. So that's what we are trying to achieve here, cleaner URLs. So now that we know where to get this text from there, we have access to it like this, then let's make something that will manipulate this text. So what I really want is to create an, an array where each one of these items is in a separate uh, place because right now it's in URL and then each of these, uh, they are all combined together. I want them one at a time in the thingy here. So let's create something. Now we're going to move a little bit fast here because we've wasted quite an amount of time. So bear with me here. So I'm going to create a function. Now, when creating functions in a class, it's always a good idea to specify whether this class is public or it's private or it's protected, right? So in this case, I want it protected, but because this is, uh, if you don't understand these, you understand them as we go forth. Uh, public means the function can be accessed from outside. Uh, private means it can't be accessed from outside. So let's use private, but protected is just like private, only that uh, uh, that the function can be inherited. So uh, don't worry too much about those things. For now, they don't really matter. So this one is a private function because we're only going to use it inside this class, nowhere else. So I'm going to call this one, um, uh, what do I call it? Function, I'll just call it get URL like this because this is the function that will get the URL. So inside here, I will put something like this. I will say uh, URL is equal to what's inside the get URL. Like so. Okay, so get URL. So I'm getting that particular thing, which is the item that we want. Now, keep in mind that if there's nothing here, this URL thing will not exist. So if I remove all of this, I will get an error here 
because this won't exist. So we have to check if it exists and if it doesn't, we give this thing a default value. So we can do that simply by putting two question marks like that. This is no safe operator. It checks if this is an existing thing before supplying it here. And if it doesn't exist, there's a, um, a backup there. So the backup is going to be home because I want, if I can't find that, I'll just use the home. Uh, I'll just imagine there's home there. So now if you see, I can get, um, wait a minute, here I can say return so that we return that value URL like that. So we are getting this value, putting it in here. We are putting contingency plans to make sure that if this is empty, we put in home and then we return that value to wherever this function was called. So let's call this function instead of getting things directly from the get variable. So here I'm just going to say get URL. So the result of this, we're going to print out. So just like that, get URL and let's see what we get. Okay, so it says caught one identified function get URL. Okay, so it's saying it can't find this function in the global scope. Now, the reason it can't find it is because this is isolated inside this class. So in order to tell it that I mean the function that is within this class, don't look outside, just look within this class, I'll put an operator called this like that and point to it. So that's a dash and a, uh, is this greater than? Yes. Okay, so this get URL. So this represents the app right there. Okay, if I want, I would have used the name of the app itself and put it there. It will still work. Now, the problem is that uh, if I change the name of the app, the class at some point, then all these references will go wrong. This is why we just use this to describe whatever the class name is at that time. So we're saying this get URL. So from there, we're going to refresh and this that's what we get okay now imagine i uh, remove all of this what do i get i get home because that's what i told it there pretty good so back there we go so let's work with that now i want to make this into an array so how do i do that i can split these guys using the slashes because the slashes determine where the values end so if i split by slash then I can put these into separate item, uh, array items. So let's do just that. So here I'm going to say um, array. I'm going to call this one array is equal to, let's split using the function explode. So the explode takes two uh, items here, the delimi delimi delimiter, wow. The, uh, that's the value that you want to use to split. So that's the slash, okay? And then what are you splitting? I'm splitting the URL. Okay. Now, if for some reason home is the one in here, it doesn't have this slash. So that's okay. It will, it will put this into the first item. So this explode will create an array that has items from there. And instead of returning the URL, now let's return the array. And then let's see what we have. So if I refresh now, you see we have products, category, baby powder. So all these are into separate sections here which is very nice, okay, pretty cool. And then sometimes someone can put some malicious information there. So we need to clean this up, right? So let's clean that up. So URL, before we split it into an array, it's still a string at this point. What I want to do is clean it up using filter var. Okay. So filter var is going to remove any spaces, any characters that are not good for your URL. It's going to remove those and ignore them. Now you can skip this filter var part depending if it starts giving you problems. If let's say you have uh, spaces in your URL and you need to keep those spaces, then you don't need to do this part. But for now, let's do it. So the variable we want to filter is this one, but let's tell it how we want to filter it. We want to use a filter var uh, wait a minute what we want to use filter var url hmm is this correct no and and defined constant hmm so this is a constant here 
uh, the constant means it's it's actually an integer it's one two three four like that and instead of remembering the number it's harder to remember a number but it's easier to remember some text so we'll put in some text like this as you can see it doesn't have a uh, a dollar sign like this because it's a constant so it represents a number or an, a different value but so what we can do here is this if you have a problem and you can't remember something just type php and then let's use filter var like that okay so filter var let's open the one that has php.net this is how you find out anything so any functions that i use in my project if you are unsure of how they work just come to php.net type them and then you get uh, what you need so here there's filter var there's mixed which means that's the the value that you put here is mixed it can be anything it can be an array a string and then the, an integer here for the filter okay so filter default is the default value so if we don't provide a filter it's going to use the default but for me specifically i want to use one that filters the url okay instead of the default so since these values have an equal sign it means they are optional you can do without them even this one here has an equal sign so it's optional so let's look for all the default filters here uh, it should explain somewhere where the filters are so there's filter validate email okay filter validate so you can use that to validate an email okay so that's that's the problem i've seen it here it's instead of filter va it should be validate url so it has changed to green which means it was recognized that's nice so it's going to work this time so there's a list of um of the flags that you can use here where are they filter default equivalent to this one types of filters so right here on the filter uh, explanation if you click on types of filters it's going to show you all of them there's validate filters there's sanitize filters uh, but we don't want to use a validate actually we want to sanitize the url so if i click on this there should be one filter sanitize url uh, there it is so filter sanitize url okay there we go so it's going to do that it will remove all characters except letters so any special characters exclamation points whatever it will remove all of them and only leave as letters except letters yes so that's what i want so i'm going to replace that with filter sanitize url very good okay so we are back here to our thingy and let's refresh and there we go good so let's test that let's put an exclamation point on baby powder oops it's still there nice okay so if it's there then uh it's okay for the url i guess but you see when i put a space there it's removed as you can see there's no space there anymore so it's working uh, so it really depends what you want if you want spaces in there then don't do the sanitize thing okay pretty good so now we've gotten the url and we have an array here and this is really all we needed we needed an array now this array is going to work in this way the first item here will always represent the page that you want to be on so if i want to be on the profile page this will always be the page so page at the beginning and then this that comes after that we can decide what we want really what we are interested in is just the page so if there's nothing here we just have the home page you see there that's it okay so if nothing home page if i type home still we get the home page right if i type profile page we go to the profile page this is how the router will work simple and straightforward then anything that comes after that we can decide what to do with that as long as we know first what page we're going to okay so let's make a system now that loads the appropriate page depending on the first item here